animal husbandry. The strategies adapted for enhancing food production are bound to play a major role in uh, meeting the requirement of the food for the ever since increasing the world's the population in the near future. The biological concepts, principles that are applied to the animal husbandry will become a crucial in our efforts to increase the food production. Animal husbandry is the agricultural practice of breeding and raising livestock, all domesticated animals reared for the benefit of man, we call livestock, and it includes buffaloes, cows, pigs, hogs, cattle, sheep, camels, goats, etc. However, the term livestock is often used for farm animals. If extended, it also includes the poultry farming and fisheries. And since the time immemorial, animals like bees, the apiculture we say, silkworm, silkworm we call sericulture, that culture of pran, crop, fishes, aquaculture, then birds, pigs, birds we call poultry, particularly we are doing that fowl, that pigs, cattle, sheep, goats and camels have been used by humans for products such as honey, silk, meat, pork, milk, uh, hides, uh, wool, etc. Dairy farms, dairy industry, poultry, aquaculture have been providing employment and additional source of income, mainly in the rural areas. The average annual milk yield is about this is the area where there is a possibility of question general introduction it is. Then where is uh, the possibility? There I am underlining here. The 170 liters per cow in India. The average annual milk yield is about 170 liters per cow in India. Contrary to it, the average annual milk yield is about 4,000 liters per cow in Netherlands. Because of its low productivity, the Indian cow is known as teacup cow. Because very less it is giving 170 liters milk per uh, that year in India. So that's why that particular cow is called teacup cow. So newer technologies have to be applied to achieve improvement in quality and productivity. Modern methods of breeding, that multiple ovulation and embryo transfer technology that we learned earlier, and the production of transgenic animal must be taken up on a large scale in addition to conventional practices and care. Okay, then cattle population in India consists of three groups of breed. They are milch breeds, milch breeds, which yield higher quantity of milk and the bullocks are not useful in farms of uh, farms or transport. The superior milch buffalo breed is Murra breed. We discuss more about this Murra yesterday. Drought breed, bullocks are excellent drought animals uh, that are useful in agricultural practices. We call drought actually. Dual purpose, that means general utility. That would means both male is uh, used for the drought at agricultural practices and female go for the production of milk. That what you say, the drought breed. Okay. Then Ongol breed is uh, bull is the costliest uh, of all the types of bulls in India. That Anand dairy in Gujarat, the most popular dairy in India sells it's milk products under the brand name Amul. We know this very well, isn't it? But uh, uh, this uh, you might not be know this. Uh, the full form of Amul, Anand Milk Union Limited. People feel so this as a name. No, that's an abbreviation. Anand Milk Union Limited. Management of farm and farm animals. Let's take a professional approach to the farm management gives the much needed boost to our food production. And it suddenly has an edge on traditional practices. The farm management ensures the optimum quality feed, breeding, and caring. It provides good infrastructure and takes care of sick animals. Dairy farm management, let's take a look on the dairy farm management. Breeding, feeding, and management of the milch animal, production, processing, and marketing of their milk and milk products on economic basis constitute dairying will be helpful for us to write a two marks question. Breeding, feeding, management of milk animal, production, processing and marketing of their milk and milk products on economic basis constitute dairying. Commercial dairy systems house uh, five to hundreds of hybrid cows uh, or murra hybrid buffaloes. 
So how do Mura hybrid buffaloes we create uh, that we are seeing in the earlier class? The different kinds of products that can be made with milk from a dairy farm are butter, ghee, curd, but, buttermilk, cheese, paneer, etc. The dairy provides an occupation and income in all seasons to the farmers. Milk is considered as indispensable food for one fourth of the population, which include infants and uh, children. In recent years, Dairying has assumed a new dimension with emphasis on increased production of the quality milk through technical innovation and modern management methods. Indian dairy industry uh, had witnessed a fantastic growth since the inception of the program Project Operation Flag. Project Operation Flag by National Dairy Development Board, NDDB, National Dairy Development Board, Operation Flag. To be remembered over. Okay, Operation Flood, NDDB, conduct the Operation Flood, National Dairy Development Board. Then, do you know the father of white revolution in India, the founder of Anand Dairy, and the founder chairman of NDDB was Dr. Kurian. Let's see his photograph. The Dr. Kurian, in the very first of the chapter, we are seeing him. The Dr. Kurian, that uh, the uh, NDDB chairman and uh, uh, the founder of Anand Milk Union, that Amul, the father of white revolution in India, founder of Anand Dairy and the founder chairman of NDDB was Dr. Kurian. In dairy farm management, we deal with uh, processes and systems that increase yield and improve quality of milk. The following are the essential components, the selection of good breeds, having uh, uh, high yielding potential, Combined with disease resistance as important as milk yield primarily depends upon the quality of breeds in the farm. Examples include high yielding hybrid cows of the exotic breeds like Holston Frisian, Holston Frisian, Jersey, that Ayrshire, Holston Frisian, Jersey, Ayrshire and Brown Swiss. Do remember this is very general area. We have to search for that particular question where there is a possibility to ask in neat examination. So that's why I'm underlining that area. Very few, very few. Holston Frisian, Jersey, Ayrshire and Brown Swiss. Holston Frisian cow yields up to 30 liters of milk a day. Up to 30 liters of milk a day. Then proper housing with adequate water, ventilation, suitable temperature, etc. is needed to enhance the yield potential and the feeding of cattle with a special emphasis on quality and quantity of the fodder should be done in a scientific manner while milking, storage, transport, cleanliness and hygiene are of paramount importance. As these processes are mechanized, direct contact of the produce that are produced with the handler is reduced. A regular visit by a veterinary doctor is necessary and proper record keeping and inspection could help to identify and rectify the problems at the earliest. So these are the things to be remembered over in dairy farm management. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are the issues to be remembered. I am not going to say by putting these, following these particular issues, we are going to become a dairy farmer, but as a general information, the basic procedures we are learning. In India, at present, buffalo's milk accounts for about 54%. 54%. And the rest were cow's milk. Uttar Pradesh occupied the first place, followed by Punjab and Haryana in milk production. Animal breeding. Animal breeding is an important aspect of animal husbandry, which aims at increasing the yield of animals and improving the desirable qualities of the produce. What is the breed? Breed is a group of animals Related by descent and similar in most characters like appearance, feature, size, configuration that we have seen in study. Okay, so the following are the desirable qualities for which we breed animals that like disease, disease resistance, increase in the quality and quantity of milk, meat, wool, etc. That should be fast growth rate that is required. Enhanced productive life by improving the genetic merit of livestock livestock, early maturity and economy of feed. These are the particular. So I'll give a brief here as though we are, we are completed it, but I'll give a brief methods of animal breeding, inbreeding, outbreeding. Inbreeding include close breeding and line breeding. Close breeding and line breeding. In case of close breeding and line breeding, first of all, the example, we have an example here, Bath Indicus, 
and vivalas vivalis buffalo vivalas vivalis a superior female in the case of cattle is a cow that is bark indicate the scientific name vivalas vivalis is a scientific name of uh, buffalo that to be remembered over and uh, after that that uh, breeding techniques just to their land actually but we'll go for a brief what is what in that point of view what is what the close breeding between the male parent male parent we call sire and female offspring or dam female consider dam and uh, the male generally consider sire okay so the close breeding is the mate between the male parent and female offspring or female with what with male offspring that uh, whatever we say that line breed that we say close breeding very close relatives line breeding which is called cousin mating is a selecting breeding of animal for desired feature by mating them within a closely related line so close breeding and line breeding so that uh, the close breeding and line breeding helpful for the upgrading that means to increase the homozygosity that will be helpful for then thus inbreeding is necessary if you want to evolve a, a pure line animal it helps in accumulation of the superior genes and elimination of the less desirable genes these are the advantages that inbreeding increase homozygosity and uh, that helps in the accumulation of the superior genes elimination of the less desirable genes that we say there are advantages okay so this approach in each step increases the productivity of the inbred population because we are doing it for uh, milk production as we said over milk production is a polygenic inheritance milk production gene that means number of genes will increase as long as the homozygosity is increasing the genes also the disadvantages of the uh, inbreeding inbreeding depression the very important thing to be thing to be remembered over inbreeding depression continuous inbreeding especially close breeding which is done with very close relatives reduces the fertility and even productivity we call it as inbreeding depression okay inbreeding may express harmful recessive alleles that is one more genetically that uh, they say harmful recessive alleles uh, can be exposed over so then when continuous uh, doing inbreeding is not suggestible then at the time to retain the characters what we have to do that we need to go with uh, outbreeding whenever the inbreeding depression becomes a problem selected animals of the breeding population should be mated with unrelated superior animals of the same breed this usually helps to restore the fertility and yield next outbreeding we have two types outcrossing and cross breeding what is outcrossing practice of mating of animals within the same breed but no relation till four to six generations Suffering of such mating is known as outcross. The best breeding method of animal that are below average in milk production <coughs> and growth rate in case of beef cattle. Okay, a single outcross even help to overcome inbreeding depression. Whatever the problem is raised there in the close breeding. Okay, next the cross breeding. Cross breeding. What is cross breeding? We are doing the cross like Murra male, Ungol female. That means what do you say? That uh, Ungol breed female, Murra breed male. What do you call? That is called cross breeding. We are doing between the two different breeding types. So the superior males of one breed and mated with the superior females of another breed. We call cross breed. Cross breeding allows the desirable qualities of the two different breeds to be combined. The progeny, the cross breeds, are not only used for the commercial production but also. uh inbreeding and selection to develop stable breed which may be superior to existing breed and to be remembered the very important hisardale which is a new breed developed by bicanary eels marino rams bicanary eels and marino rams okay uh, that is a sheep uh, variety when it comes to the fowls rhode island red white leg horn likewise when we cross them Uh, that Vancouver, Ross, Hubbard, the varieties we developed in because of crossing between the two different breeding types. Vancouver, you may know very well. Vancouver is a broiler chicken, a variety, a breed developed by cross breeding of uh, two different breeding types. Okay, next let's come with the interspecific hybridization. The cross between the two species of the same genera, we say that uh, the species hybridization or interspecific hybridization, intra till the time we did. close breeding line breeding outcrossing cross breeding that is intra what is this inter between the two different species that is even possible between only uh, that uh, were belongs to uh, one genera very closely related one 
like i said yesterday tiger and lion we got liger but more famous is mule mule is more famous that uh, cross between the male donkey jackass and female horse mare and stallion that uh, uh, stallion is the male horse and uh, jennet is said to be the female donkey we get hinny uh, mule we use it to say more powerful one more mule is more time that in uh, maximum areas we will find that in that uh, for climbing for uh, fast running uh, both aspects can be seen over that's why in the mountain areas we will find the presence of mule more then now controlled breeding experiment we call it as multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology i'll give a brief here multiple ovulation so multiple ovulation required the sperm and ovum okay sperm and ovum so the collection of the sperm from the desirable superior male is said to be arctic that uh, that what he call sperm were collected and injected to the female we say introduced into the female reproductive tract after the collection of uh, sperm from the superior bulls we call that artificial insemination when do that particular process will be done when the female is in estrus condition that means ovulation condition is called estrus or we call it as heat so the semen can be used immediately or you can uh, store it as a, as a frozen condition for later period also what do you call this process or artificial insemination so in this way desirable crosses can be made the major advantage of artificial insemination over natural mating is that it uh, permits the dairy farmer to use the top proven sites for genetic improvement of the his head and control uh, of venereal diseases even mm -hmm. then uh, uh, that venereal genital disorders we say venereal diseases artificial insemination is also a tremendous value in making optimal use of different sites and enables the dairy farmer to breed individual cows to selected sites according to their breeding goals the breeding center salen very very important salen in rai bareilly is at present the breeder and uh, producer of the top quality frozen semen of pure exotic breed next multiple ovulation embryo transfer in general a cow a cattle a buffalo is going to release only one egg so what we have to do for more number of eggs that fsh like activity that means follicle stimulating hormone injection will give then that that induces more follicles to be matured over that we say more number of eggs will be released that we call super ovulation instead of one egg in super ovulation six to eight eggs are going to be released over the animal a uh, cow is either mated with an allied bull or earlier we are said artificial insemination can be done over that means uh, in general one fertilization occurs that uh, using advancement in the technology a condition stored sperm uh, can be used here for insemination that artificial insemination we used to say and we got more number of eggs what's the problem here that uh, if six eggs are formed six zygotes are formed one cow can't accommodate that's why so we are introducing that to the other one that means we call surrogate mother an animal that develops offspring of another animal in its womb we say that mother has surrogate mother so at a time desirable individuals we are going to develop in uh, uh, that particular uh, six cows we use okay but six cows can we say they are genetic mother no that just they are using uh, we are using the uterus of that particular donor surrogate mother Okay, so now the genetic mother is ready for another round of super ovulation. That means, in a, a desirable cow, we made some six day goat, and these six six day goats are introduced into six uh, surrogate mothers. So what makes so this mother, this particular desirable cow, is ready again to produce the eggs? Okay, so this is advancement in technology. This technology is used in uh, use for cattle, sheep, rabbits, buffaloes, maize, likewise. the high milk yielding breeds of females and high quality lean meat with less lipid we call high quality meat yielding bulls have been bred successfully to increase the head size in a short period of time okay the same way we'll go to the poultry farm management also poultry it is a class of domesticated fowls or birds reared for the production of eggs or meat or both it includes chicken pea fowls duck turkeys geese pigeons the pheasants and emus 
amounts will be collected in india also nowadays the boards which are raised exclusively for the production of eggs are called layers the definition to be remembered for meat purpose we call broilers the broilers meat layers egg production in farms okay then there are of either uh, sex under the age of 8 to that uh, uh, 10 weeks weighing 1.5 kg with a smooth textured breast we say that uh, the a uh, poultry uh, that uh, broiler 1.5 kg is said to be very healthy which is coming from the poultry uh, that uh, 1.5 kg more than that that is not much uh, uh, what do you say uh, not much commercial value it is having because the scientists believe so that 1.5 kg broiler is uh, that uh, a suitable and very good healthy in healthy condition what you can say the scientific poultry management aims at maximizing the returns with uh, minimum investment poultry farming is spread all over india both as cottage and large scale industry in india at present india ranks third in egg production egg production third fifth in chicken meat production in the world andhra pradesh is the largest egg producer in india syllabus is not much changed actually andhra pradesh means uh, united andhra pradesh in that way that largest egg producer in india so padma sri dr b b rao the father of modern poultry in india he was the founder chairman of national egg coordination committee most of the time you may have seen over they promote uh, egg uh, eating national egg coordination committee which monitors and marketing of eggs in india that uh, and their uh, exports the central poultry breeding farms are established at mumbai bhuvaneshwar very very important you see here central poultry breeding farms established at mumbai bhuvaneshwar and heezer katta developed hybrid strains of layers next indian veterinary research institute ivri is at ijaz nagar produces quality broiler strains and poultry vaccines central poultry breeding farms established at mumbai bhuvaneshwar heezer katta developed hybrid strains of layers so that question will come in that form who develop hybrid strains of layers likewise ivri at ijaz nagar produce what the quality broiler strains and also poultry vax ijaz nagar ivri is producing broiler strains and poultry vax remaining is a general information like select that how do we do poultry management so important components of the important components we are not here to learn the Not, it's not a training program. How to raise poultry cultures? Was well, just simply the brief history we are talking about. Selection of disease-free and suitable breeds. The selected breed should get acclimatized to a wide range of climatic conditions. Hybrid layers in India are are used at BB three hundred, Hyalin, Pune Pels, etc. Okay, the commercial broiler strains in India that. Uh, Venco, Ross, Hubbard, Venco, Ross, Hubbard. The Venco is more famous in our place, isn't it? Venco. That you may see over that uh, the variety name Venco. Then uh, the feed management, proper feed and water, balanced diet is must to maximize the yield. Broader a chick mash. We have the uh, feeding levels here. Initially we will give the chick mash or broader mash, then broiler mash, then pre layer mash. and finally layer mash for layers we are talking brooder mash broiler mash and pre layer mash and layer mash are fed to layers at different ages likewise pre that uh, in case of broiler pre starter mash starter mash and finish mash are the types of feeds It means here where the why the stages they'll give for example uh, that uh, when it comes to the pre layer and layer mash you will find calcium composition more in the diet why because they are laying eggs that shell should be stronger in that way when it comes to the finish mass of broiler uh, we can see the calories energy uh, the food will be given over because at the finish mass that uh, particular broilers are coming into the market they should be active so this kind of logical food we provide the only thing you need to remember we are not here to know, know the compositions of everything that only thing you have to remember for in case of layers first we give brooder mass then a uh, broiler mass pre layer mass and layer mass that is for dry layers then in case of broilers pre starter mass the pre starter mass starter mass and finally before into the market finish mass 
that uh, are three types of faith given to the boiler safe water should be supplied over through water that at all times and next health care that various diseases are there like ranicket marek gamburu for viral diseases we can say that viral diseases aspergillosis aspertaxicosis thrush uh, i think it's done out wait okay as that uh, fungal diseases we can say ranicket marek gamburu viral diseases ranicate marek and gambur viral diseases in the same way you'll get the question that they will ask you marek is what is marek marek is viral disease that is we don't want causative uh, according to the new syllabus using antibiotics to treat bacterial diseases we have to use vaccination is required for viral diseases bacterial diseases antibiotic is enough okay foul cholera infectious coryza and uh, chronic respiratory disease for bacterial diseases aspergillosis aflatoxicosis and uh, pneumonia thrush thrush or moniliasis interestingly thrush is a immune disorder do you know that is an immune disorder fungal disease immune disorder like uh, we can say uh, foul hiv uh, foul aids we can say thrush that means you know that hiv will affect an immune system in the same way thrush is also going to be moniliasis we use it to say no need all that just we have to list it out ranicate marek gamburu are viral diseases and uh, foul cholera infectious coryza and chronic respiratory disease are bacterial diseases that uh, pneumonia brooders pneumonia aflatoxicosis thrush are said to be fungal diseases that we have to remember in addition to the above hygiene proper and safe farm conditions ensure better produce nutritional value of the chicken meat egg Uh, that egg is having only proteins and lipids and more calorific value are given below here let's take a look on them i don't think so i should make you aware nowadays all people are making it aware to eat the chicken and egg that because antibodies are made up of proteins and that 100 grams of egg contain 13.3% of the protein which is helpful for the production of antibodies in the present covid situation so that's why they are suggesting you to eat more meat of chicken and more a number of eggs 100 grams of egg contain 13.3% of protein and 100 grams of chicken meat contain 20% of protein the fats in the egg is 11.5% chicken meat is much less 2.5% yeah, energy wise egg gives that 173 kilo calories and 100 grams of chicken meat gives 109 kilo calories okay The egg is a highly nutritious food item for humans because of its high value, ninety six percent biological value is ninety six percent. Protein efficiency ratio is four point five percent. That's why it is used to be more suggestible. And uh, the more famous disease, particularly detail we are learning here, you may have seen over in newspaper that in lax uh, the fowls died. because of avian flu bird flu we is used to say is an important disease affecting poultry birds and uh, man has to be uh, very watchful this disease it is very dangerous him too because it affects from fowls to human also it will will come so what is the causative h5n1 the virus it is bird flu is caused by h5n1 the virus that causes the bird infection also affect the human being that's why we are going to say it is too dangerous by eating bird flu causative bird that uh, also it may it can come so it can start a worldwide epidemic pandemic disease worldwide if it is there we call it as pandemic the mode of infection infection may be spread simply by touching contaminated surfaces so how it will come by touching contaminated surfaces birds infected by this type of uh, influenza the continue to release the virus in their feces and saliva as long as 10 days which is enough to uh, submit that particular spread the disease to all the remaining fowls and if it is sell over to human also symptoms for hiv h5n1 infection by the avian influenza virus h5n1 human causes in humans it causes typical flu like symptoms which might include cough dry or with spell that, that means mucus we are talking about that uh, diarrhea difficulty in breathing fever headache malaise weakness muscle aches sore throat 
interestingly some of that most of these are matching with our regular uh, running covid virus also isn't it sore throat uh, diarrhea is recognized them difficulty in breathing is required a seen recognized fever headache is not one much famous, became not much famous weakness is there malaysia that uh, cough the dry 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 cough particular not talc that only dry cough in case of covid virus i am talking okay let's go with the pre prevention avoiding consumption of undercooked chicken meat reduces the risk of exposure to avian flu the people who work with birds should use protective clothing and special breathing masks yeah now we nowadays we know this very much is it the people who work with birds should use we work with birds actually in case of h5n1 nowadays uh, they are working with human also they are moving with human also we are talking about about the breathing mask special breathing mask i need no need to say about how they look like complete culling of infected flax by burying or burning them as you may have seen over a newspaper that all the birds is buried or burned over in that cases where this particular h5n1 bird flu when it is affected that's why we maintain a special column for that along with that some more diseases we are seen ronicate marek gamboru are said to be ronicate marek gamboru or viral diseases and uh, Uh, that particular foul cholera infectious coryza chronic respiratory disorder are said to be bacterial diseases for bacterial diseases we use antibiotics for viral diseases prevention is a better thing there vaccination okay next along with that the foul fungal diseases like uh, the brooders pneumonia aphylaxisosis thrush okay so thrush or monilia we say uh, that are fungal diseases these are the these are the things to be remembered over okay so that means the very important thing here that that should find out the keywords should find out the keywords and uh, that need to read that particular keywords okay so because uh, a very small area uh, that that means questionable areas are very small and uh, will come in between so that's why you need to take care like 